Chapter 15 Retailing and Multi Channel Marketing These questions are the learning objectives guiding the chapter and will be explored in more detail in the following slides. What are the issues manufacturers consider when choosing retail partners? What types of retailers are available for distributing products? How do manufacturers and retailers work together to develop a strategy? Why is multi-channel marketing becoming such a prevalent channel strategy? It is the products that make the store so exciting. In addition, there is a lot of room, helpful staff, free internet, and easy checkout. This is an overview, and each stage is presented on the following slides. The level of difficulty a manufacturer has in getting retailers to purchase its products is determined by the degree to which the channel is vertically integrated. As described in Chapter 15, the degree to which the manufacturer has a strong brand or is otherwise desirable in the market, and the relative power of the manufacturer and retailer. From a retailer's perspective, it is important to know from which manufacturers its customers want to buy. Manufacturers, in contrast, need to know where their target market customers expect to find their products and those of the... As we see in this example, Estee Lauder currently sells cosmetics at Dillard's department stores, Macy's and Sears, Orangeros. Its competitors, NARS, sells at Dillard's and Macy's, but also to J.C. Penney, Green Arrows. A survey of Estee Lauder customers shows that they would expect to find its clothes at Kohl's, Dillard's, Macy's, and J.C. Penney, Blue Box. On the basis of this information, Estee Lauder decides to try to start selling at Kohl's and J.C. Penney, but stop selling at Sears. A firm must decide the appropriate level of distribution intensity, which is the number of channel members to use at each level of the marketing channel. Distribution intensity commonly is divided into three levels, intensive, exclusive, and selective. Birkenstocks can only be purchased through certain retailers. This helps control conflict between retailers and gives the manufacturer better control. Some might argue that four products is the later stages of the product life cycle. It implies higher quality to the end consumer. Now check yourself. 1. What issues should manufacturers consider when choosing retail partners? When choosing retail partners, manufacturers must look at the basic channel structure, where their target customers expect to find the products, channel member characteristics, and distribution intensity. 2. What is the difference between intensive, exclusive, and selective levels of distribution intensity? An intensive distribution strategy is designed to get products into as many outlets as possible. Exclusive distribution policy grants exclusive geographic territories to one or very few retail customers, so no other customers in the territory can sell a particular brand. Selective distribution uses a few selected customers in a territory. These kinds of grassroots movements are very difficult for retailers. They rarely get a strong enough following to threaten retailers' overall sales, even if they slow down a particular day of sales. This slide identifies the two major types of retailers and the subcategories of each. Conventional supermarkets offer groceries, meat, and produce, with limited sales of non-food items, such as health and beauty aids and general merchandise, in a self-service format. The main types of general merchandise retailers are discount stores, specialty stores, category specialists, department stores, drug stores, off-price retailers, and extreme value retailers. Many of these general merchandise retailers sell through multiple channels, such as the Internet and catalogs. GNC sells many brands, including its own products, private brands. Now check yourself. 1. What are the different types of food retailers? What differences mark their strategies? Food retailers include 1. Supermarkets, a self-service food store offering groceries, meat, and produce with limited sales of non-food items, such as health and beauty aids and general merchandise. 2. 
Super centers, the fastest growing retail category, are large stores, 150,000 to 220,000 square feet, that combine a supermarket with a full-line discount store. By offering broad assortments of grocery and general merchandise products under one roof, super centers provide a one-stop shopping experience. 3. Warehouse Clubs Large retailers, at least 100,000 to 150,000 square feet, that offer a limited and irregular assortment of food and general merchandise with little service at low prices for ultimate consumers and small businesses. 4. Convenience Stores Provide a limited variety and assortment of merchandise at a convenient location in 2,000 to 3,000 square foot stores with speedy checkout. Milk, eggs and bread once represented the majority of their sales, but now the majority of sales comes from gasoline and cigarettes. 2. What are the different types of general merchandise retailers? What differences mark their strategies? General merchandisers include 1. Department stores Carry a broad variety and deep assortment Offer customer services And organize their stores into distinct departments for displaying merchandise 2. Full line discount stores Offer a broad variety of merchandise Limited service and low prices Specialty stores Concentrate on a limited number of complementary merchandise categories and provide a high level of service in relatively small stores. Specialty stores tailor their retail strategy toward very specific market segments by offering deep but narrow assortments and sales associate expertise. 3. Drug stores. Specialty stores that concentrate on pharmaceuticals and health and personal grooming merchandise. 4. Category specialists. Discount stores that offer a narrow but deep assortment of merchandise. 5. Extreme value retailers. Small, full-line discount stores that offer a limited merchandise assortment at very low prices. 6. Off-price retailers. Offer an inconsistent assortment of brand name merchandise at low prices. Providing the right mix of merchandise and services that satisfies the needs of the target market is one of retailers' most fundamental activities. Offering assortments gives customers choice. Price helps define the value of both the merchandise and the service, and the general price range of a particular store helps define its image. Price must always be aligned with the other elements of the mix. Retailers know that good promotion, both within their retail environments and throughout the mass media, can mean the difference between flat sales and a growing consumer base. Retailers already have realized that convenience is a key ingredient to success, and an important aspect of this success is convenient locations. Many customers choose stores on the basis of where they are located. Products can be distributed in stores, catalogs, the Internet, or a combination of these channels. This slide summarizes the advantages of each channel. Shopping over the Internet provides the convenience offered by catalogs and other non-store formats. However, the Internet, compared with store and catalog channels, also has the potential to offer a greater selection of products and more personalized information about products and services in a relatively short amount of time. It also offers sellers the unique opportunity to collect information about how consumers shop, information that they can use to improve the shopping experience across all channels. The Internet can supply research, This is not the online model, but another way retailers can add value through the web. They can use it for PR and for delivering messages to the consumer that they are not able to deliver within the stores. This web link is to H&M's online video regarding their CSR. The second web link is for an online model at Land's End. H&M no longer offer theirs. Traditional store-based and catalog retailers and some manufacturers are placing more emphasis on their electronic channels and evolving into multi-channel retailers. That is, retailers that use some combination of stores, catalogs, and the Internet to sell merchandise. Multi-channel marketing will evolve for four reasons. 
First, the electronic channel gives them an opportunity to overcome the limitations of their primary existing format. Second, by using an electronic channel, they can expand their market reach. Third, providing a multi-channel offering builds share of wallet or the percentage of total purchases made by a customer from a particular seller. Fourth, an electronic channel enables firms to gain valuable insights into their customers' shopping behavior. Disintermediation occurs when a manufacturer sells directly to consumers, bypassing retailers. Retailers are concerned about disintermediation because manufacturers can get direct access to their consumers by establishing a retail site on the Internet. The capabilities for multi-channel retailing are several, with store-based retailers, catalog retailers, and merchandise manufacturers all having different levels of capability. Disintermediation occurs when a manufacturer sells directly to consumers, bypassing retailers. Multi-channel retailers are retailers that use some combination of stores, catalogs, and the Internet to sell merchandise. 